it came. Yeah. And uh, all three little lights are light, lit up green. When I plugged this in last night, only only the first one here was, was flashing and then it, it went solid and the second one started flashing after a while and then it went solid and well, then I went to bed. And when I got up this morning, we got we got three solid lights. So I guess that means the battery is charged. Now I did an extensive box opening yesterday, last night. Uh, for people that do not like box openings, uh, scrub ahead in this video until you get to the time in your timeline that is shown in the bottom of your screen right now and then go get ahead to where maybe we start working on the model ship but but today I'm going to try and get this thing up and running so far all of the box opening is not at 60 frames a second it's just at 30 um, but hopefully we're gonna have this up and running and do some of the model ship with it a little later today as you can see it is quite early uh, yeah, what, what do we got there? About uh, 19 minutes to 7 in the morning. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but I, I woke up and I was kind of excited. I wanted to get going here. Uh, so I'm going to have to... Uh, I haven't even put the battery in it yet. So, uh, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's just sort of roll back and you'll see how we got to this place. And like I say... If you if you don't like rollbacks and you want to get to this morning, uh, just scrub ahead to the time that's shown on the bottom of your screen there. Uh, okay. Well, I got a bit of a pleasant surprise here. Uh, I wasn't expecting this for a couple hours yet. I guess I should check my email more. Uh, Andrew sent me an email to let me know that somebody was going to be driving right past my house and uh, they could drop it off. I didn't see the email, so I didn't know it was coming. I, I, I heard somebody outside and, uh, and I thought, well, it, it, can't, be, it can't be Andrew. Uh, anyway, doorbell rings and I think, oh, okay, maybe. Delivery uh, well, here it is. So I'm just going to clear clear off the model table here, and uh, I'm going to be very careful not to break anything off of the, our ship in my excitement and exuberism. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to shove everything back, and uh, I, I, I take the ship off. But I think I think I just need a. Uh, maybe I should take the ship off the table, and that way there won't be any accidents. Uh, well, I'll see. Okay, I think we've about got enough room here. And uh, I think I remembered to put the Nikon lens cap where everybody can see it. I should get a freebie from Nikon all the times I've gone to the extra effort of, you know, having this thing visible. I'm sure most of you figured out what I was doing, right? It's kind of, kind of fun. I enjoy doing that. Anyway, uh, you know, sometimes you'll see me wearing this, uh, this old Seiko watch. And, uh, and you also know how I like to uh, tell stories. And this is a true story. It wasn't like the one I told yesterday about uh, Queen, El Queen Elizabeth uh, sending me an email. I mean, this, this really happened. Okay, when I bought this watch here in Winnipeg, it was either the fall of 73 or, the, you know, or early 74, somewhere in there. I bought it at a place called Independent Jewelers. Now, this, this story is going somewhere. Now, in Independent Jewelers, they had a camera department. And I, I don't remember at that time that it was called Independent Photo. All I remember was they had a camera department and there was a guy there that was pretty knowledgeable. Well, I, I, 
I know one camera for sure I bought there. Uh, it was uh, it was a Leica M4. And those of you who are camera buffs might be can sort of maybe envision that. It was it was kind of a little bit old fashioned for its time. Like it it didn't have all the you know like behind the lens metering and stuff like that. It was pretty much a basic a basic uh, slide camera. But what was really great about it was it had you could get one of the best lenses in the world if you wanted just a normal 50 millimeter lens and that's what I had it was an f2 Summicron and and that thing was sharp like you wouldn't believe in great color it you know for for slides I mean if that you know uh, you know like the Kodak Kodachrome uh, 25 ASA it'd be like 25 ISO now I guess anyway uh, yeah, so I bought that camera there, and I think I had, had I in my life I had two Konica auto reflex cameras, and I'm pretty sure one of them I bought there. Anyway, so this story is going somewhere. It turns out, as far as I know, Photo Central is kind of affiliated with uh, uh, Independent Photo, Independent Jewelers. Uh, I had no idea way back in the early 70s, or actually when I bought when I bought that camera stuff, it was in the 60s. It was in the 60s, so I had no idea that uh, uh, years down the road I'd be dealing with an outfit that was sort of like you might say some sort of a spin-off. It's funny how things how, th how things go. And uh, I'm sure that uh, if Andrew is watching this video, he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, he'll think, oh yeah, you know, anyway. Um, I'm so excited here, I can't, I can't even think straight. I'm scared to open the box, I'm so excited. I mean, I, I feel like a, a, a kid with his first car, you know. And I don't know why, I, you know, because I got a new car sitting outside, and when I drove it home, I parked it and left it there. I wasn't excited. Uh, but this I am. It's because this camera is what I dreamed SLRs should be. Uh, you know, if 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 we can take a okay. So so my little point and shoot here. I've actually I got two of these. This one will shoot 4K though. That's why I got the, got this one. So. I thought, why can't they make an SLR like this? It, it, has, it doesn't have a shutter. It's all electronic. Why can't they make an SLR? Well, finally they did. I think Nikon is the first one to have a professional shutterless SLR. Uh, let's open the box. I'm going to all uh, recompose. Okay, you watch now. Canon and Sony and all the other big names, they're going to copy this because it's such a great idea. Now I only get to open this box once, so I don't want to screw it up. Okay, here's that wide angle lens that I was talking about. This will be the adapter so that my old Nikon F mount lenses will work on this new Z mount camera. Okay, and it takes uh, 
special memory cards. I've got two of them. It has two slots. And they're not cheap. They are not cheap. And here we go. Now there shouldn't be anything else in here. Okay. Let's recompose and uh, open these boxes up. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll save the best for last. Uh, these memory cards, uh, for those of you who are camera buffs, it's, it's these ones right here. Um, yeah, they uh, has a, they're, they're not the most expensive that, that they had there at uh, Photo Central. But they, Andrew said that they've been working out really well with the, you know, the camera people here and camera buffs here in Winnipeg, and uh, so they were a little cheaper. Uh, not that that they were any smaller in size. They're 128 gigabyte. Uh, right now, my uh, D850 has two 164s. And my thinking was that if I double the amount of, of memory in the camera, the camera should run just as long, even though I'm going to be running it twice as fast. In other words, right now, what you're watching is being uh, videoed at 30 frames a second in 4K. And my, my, my goal is, in fact, we'll be probably starting it tomorrow with tomorrow's episode, uh, to be running at 60 frames a second in 4K. Now, now this camera will actually run 100 and 120 frames a second in 4K, but you can't really use that except for maybe like uh, slow motion, uh, very slight slow motion, but anyway. Uh, there's no use taking these out. I'll probably show it being inserted into the camera when the time comes. But they're just like a great big SD card. They're uh, they're they're a special card. Okay. Now this is going to be the adapter. Now, please don't make a fool of yourself here, Ron, because you can't get the box open. I do believe that you have to go online and download the latest firmware for this thing, which sounds really strange, but you, you uh, that's what I understand. I think I, I think I mentioned one of my other videos, it's much like a, uh, an extension tube, which is basically what it is. Oh, here we go. All right, Z mount. Now, to open it, you turn it to the right. <laughs> so Nikon has kept their way of locking and unlocking their lenses. You unlock it by screwing it to the right. And Okay, there, there is no glass in it. All it is is it, it, it moves the lens, the, your, your ordinary F-mount lenses, it moves them out from the body uh, because the sensor in the F-mount, in the Z camera is closer to the, to the front of the body. Anyway, I don't think it matters which cap goes on where. Oh yeah, it would. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, so this is what I need for the macro lens. Otherwise, otherwise the macro lens won't work on the Z body. And then, but then as well as just, just being like a, 
an extension tube you notice that there are electronic connections there because there's a lot of electronics in these lenses so uh, and then I do believe there's uh, a, com a little computerized system in there that's uh, uh, anyway now which way does this go okay that one's on that one's on okay I was I was thinking of maybe uh, like this is the macro lens that we enjoy using so much on the model ship and uh, th this macro lens is actually a lot a lot older than this camera. I bought this macro lens when I got my first Nikon camera which for you camera buffs was a D800 and then and then when the 810 came out and would record in stereo I, I upgraded to the uh, 810 and then when the 850 which is this one right here that I keep pointing to it it, it does 4k so I upgraded to the 850 and now now the uh, Z9 um, is like I mentioned it's pretty much everything I thought an SLR should be I hope I'm not going to be disappointed here but I, I'm pretty sure I haven't I won't be I've, I've watched a lot of reviews by people that seem to know what they're doing and uh, they, they think it's great um, okay let's let's move on and open another box here this will be the wide-angle lens which will which will more than replace the lens that's looking at that you're looking through right now. Uh, this this is the lens. Remember that the autofocusing sometimes doesn't work too good on. So hopefully this is going to work really good. Now I'll just put this off to the side. Put this in here. These little uh, pouches, I suppose they're they're handy if you put the lens in there. Uh, Nikon used to uh, give really good uh, pouches and bags with their with their uh, lenses. They don't anymore. But I guess they probably realize people aren't really using them. If this looks a little bit awkward, it's because I'm trying to do it on camera here. Okay, a lens hood. Now, now this lens hood, you'll notice, is, is very, very shallow. Okay, and the reason it's very shallow is because the the uh, angle that the lens looks out is so wide. I think it's 112 degrees or something like that, uh, which is going to be really sweet here at the model table when I'm trying to, you know, show a whole bunch of stuff all at the same time. It's you'll you'll know how quite, quite often I'll use the macro lens, or I mean the uh, fisheye lens, and the uh, that's so that I can get every everything in the entire table all at the same time. Okay. That should be everything. I want to watch that I don't have any flaps from this. These boxes go over there and break stuff off my ship. So I'll move very, very carefully here. I'm probably going to have to recompose when we open this one. Now this is just going to look like a lens. There's going to be nothing really special about it. I don't see any fingerprints on it, so uh, <laughs> I 
I'll, uh, it, it, I got to get used to it. Apparently, this this uh, ring can be programmed to either be for focusing or or whatever. It's, it is going there's going to be a bit of a learning curve on this, but it shouldn't take me too long to figure it out. Oh yeah, this opens uh, just the same way all the other caps do. They're they're not metal; they're just plastic. I remember way back when I bought the the uh, 800. I said to the guy that I bought it from, I said, "It's plastic lens cap." I thought it'd be made of metal, and I can't can't remember what he said was. I remember I do remember saying something that I was kind of old school, and I thought that lens cap should be metal. But you get used to it, and I I have to admit that the other ones that are standing up there. Okay, we'll be trying that out later. Okay, I'm going to just sort of clean up here a little bit and then we'll uh, look at the main event. Okay. Now Andrew assured me that this was in a factory fresh box. It's never been opened. Uh, he said, I'm not the first I don't get I didn't get the first one there was somebody in the store uh, when the shipment came in and that person actually got the first one so I didn't get the first one but, but that's okay I, that, that's not a big deal my my um, I'm happy to get one um, I know we're. I know you're. You're a long ways back here, and you're not going to see all the details on the camera. But you can be assured that as time goes by, we'll we'll be uh, zooming in on different aspects of it. Like when I do the settings and so on to change it to so that we shoot at 4K 60 and stuff like that. That might be kind of interesting. This is going to have something to do with probably charging the battery. Here's an, an HDMI regular to, it looks like HDMI mini. Okay. And there's a bunch of stuff that's loose here. Okay, this will be for the battery charging stuff. I, I think we're probably going to have to charge the battery before I try to do anything. I'll probably just let it charge overnight or for a while anyway. We got ourselves a Z-strap. The, the other cameras came with that. I think the, the strap on it says 850 or something. I, I never use it. I, I should. I, I suppose I would if I went out a lot, but I'm usually here at the model table, so I'll worry about that later. Okay, this is kind of heavy, so this is going to be the battery. It doesn't take the same batteries that my uh, present camera takes. It, it's, a, it's a larger battery. And from, from what I've heard, it lasts really well. Okay. I think this just comes off. Yeah. There we go. Alright, so you plug this into the camera and, and these things make the connection. I don't think I need to put this back on, but I will. Okay, we'll worry about that later. Uh, as long as we're looking in, at packages here.
Okay, and this is the charger. So the battery will plug into this. And then I guess you plug your battery charger into that. That's what it looks like to me. And then this end goes into the wall. Makes sense to me. All right, now this is the this is what I've been waiting for. This is the granddaddy of cameras. Now, <clears throat> by no means it's not the most expensive camera in the world that I could use to take video. I think uh, the, you can get cameras that will shoot in 12K now, but uh, this is going to be just fine. Oh my. Oh my goodness. I finally got it in my hands. I cannot believe it. I cannot believe it. I've got it in my hands. Oh. I sure like the feel of it. I like the way I like the way the grip feels. You know, I I've got these big arthritic hands and and it's it's easy to hold on to. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, I'm quite pleased so far. I haven't. I haven't seen anything yet that I, that has disappointed me. Uh, I don't know if you have to have the battery in to take the, this cover off. I don't think so. It looks like it's. It looks to me like it's going to be like the other, uh, like my 850. You push in on this, and then you should be able to turn this. Okay. We'll take a nice close look later, but all right, there's the sensor. Let's cover that back up. I would have thought that uh, the uh, the uh, sensor cover would have been on, but it's not. The sensor cover looks like a focal plane shutter from, from what I've seen. So uh, we'll get the battery charged up, put it in. Uh, it's got a protective thing over the screen. The, the, the screen on this camera tilts like this and like this and it also apparently goes let's see here, how does this I don't want to force anything here but it's supposed to articulate this way as well like I say I don't want to force anything This is going to be nice. The uh, the first uh, D camera I had, the the 800, the screen didn't tilt. I don't think the eight I don't think the 810 did either, but the 850 does, and it's, it's very handy to have a, a screen that tilts. And and this one, it, uh, like I say, it goes this way as well. But a lot of these a lot of these buttons are are very uh, very similar to to the 850, so it's not going to be. Uh, some of them are in a different place. Uh, for instance, the menu button and and this button on the 850 are up here. But that, that's all right. You no, know, no problem. I'm not complaining. Don't get me wrong. And this this switch that goes from either taking pictures or movies is is down here on the 850. So there's some some differences. Um, this is this is beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. Okay, um, let's uh, call it a night here. I'm just going to charge the battery up and uh, maybe I'm going to go online and bring up the manual online. It's a lot easier than perusing through about 17 different languages that come in the, in, in the manual that came with this. So, uh, okay, we had our box opening. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, yeah. Now we'll 
change the video of today's episode back to the model ship and try and do something here. <laughs> I'm so excited. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get on the ship here. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll do something on the ship. Don't worry. As you can see from the clock here, it's getting pretty late. And there's uh, two things I realized that I kind of missed. Well, first of all, I was talking about how this screen, as well as going this way, it also goes this way. Well, when I was looking at this later, I realized that all you do is you just sort of pull on it here, and then, and then it will open out. I just wanted to show that. So you can sort of, you know, go at funny angles. To a, to a certain degree. Um, yeah. Now the other thing that I missed on was this package right here. There's some more little... Okay, I know what these are. What these, these are is they go in the side here. How would this be? Yeah when you would open this out you would s screw this in and the idea is because these cables are so stiff it would be easy to sort of yank on them a little bit crooked and break the connection on the inside of the camera there now this begs the question why do they make these cables like this why are they made in such a way that they are they are so long that uh... You know, if, if, if this was, was more flexible, sort of like the cord that I'm using right now, let's see if I can bring it down here. Okay, this cord right here, it's very, very flexible. Well, why couldn't they do something like that here? I don't know. It's kind of strange. You'd think that uh, Nikon, being as smart as they are, would know that. But then, but then this, this part should not be so long. You know, this... Anyway... Uh, and this is the same idea. It goes it goes somewhere. I can't remember where But we'll figure it out So uh, until I get a, a different kind of cable and, and I have to use this at the beginning I guess maybe this might be some sort of a data transfer. I hope I don't have to take the memory card out every time I want to get get some information out of it Let's see what do we got here Yeah, that would be USB Uh, well, well, whatever it is, is, I guess. Yeah, I, I hope I don't have to take the uh, <clears throat> the memory card out every time. Which comes out right here somehow. Well, once again, we'll figure it out. If other people are doing it, I'm sure I can do it too. Okay. Alright. We'll see you in the morning. Well, it is morning, and it seems to me that in the rollback, I had said that I would show when I changed the video speed. So we'll just turn it on here. Now, you will notice that it goes on almost instantly. Okay, now... Where's the menu button? Here we go. All right, this is the way we were shooting with the D850. Now this, this camera will has a lot of setting, settings above that. This was the top setting in the 850. And in other words, uh, 3840 by 2160 at 30 frames per second. That was the best it could do. That's, four, that's what they call 4K. 30, 3840 by 2160 is 4K. And now this one, we can crank it up a little bit here. I'll, I'll show you. It will go... Uh, That is the best it will do. That is 8K at 30 frames a second. Now, we're not going to mess with that. Let's go back down here to, to 4K at 60 frames a second. 
That's what I want. Uh, I think that's about the best that my my editing software will do. Okay, so we'll press OK. All right. So, uh, yeah, we're good to go. Now, I think I want to change the type of file. Uh, video type. I'm going to go to uh, MPEG-4. That's what I've been editing at. M MP4. Now, it defaulted when I turned the camera on t to uh, MOV. Um, but we'll go... Yeah, let's let's keep it at uh, let's keep it let's keep it at uh, MPEG four because I, I know that works. All right. Okay, the frame rate may change. Well, let's just check that out. Make sure that everything's all right. Oh, it did. Yeah. Uh, does this mean I can't? Maybe I have to shoot the other way. I guess I have to shoot the other way. All right, well, I'm glad I read that that warning sign there. Uh, go back to move. We'll just try and see if it works. That was That's what it defaulted at, so... Okay, we're back to 4K at 60. All right. Okay. Well, I gotta tell you, today is definitely not going as planned. Um, my neighbor phoned here just a little while ago, and what he wants to do is he wants to deal with the snow that we got last night. And he wants to do it now, more or less. In fact, what he's doing out there is trying to get his cars out of the way. I don't, I don't move my car. I just uh, go. I just blow snow around it. And uh, so, in other words, to be a good neighbor, I, I can't just sit here and, and play at the model table. Um, okay, now, where's my, where's that thing gone? Okay, it, it sounds like he's got a snowblower running, so he was concerned that he couldn't get it going. Sometimes these threads start easy and sometimes they don't. Oh, this one's going good. Okay. Now, for those of you who were on my case about, uh, you know, having a, a filter on the front, a clear filter, well, there we go. Uh, now, it, it looks like I've, I've got to s stop playing here and uh, and uh, and get out there and do my part. So uh, we're probably not going to be doing too much with the model table. Another thing that I'm, I'm finding is that the data coming out of this new camera at the uh, faster uh, frames per second and at the possibly a higher bit rate is uh, my, throwing my computer, you might say, for a bit of a loop, and it's struggling trying to process the uh, the video. So, um, yeah, I, I just have to quit here for for a while, folks. I'm I'm sorry. This th we may not be working on the model ship anymore today. I I had really wanted to try and get this easy line 
attached. I, I, I just don't know what to say. I gotta go. Sorry. Okay. Very soon after I shot that scene in which I was sounding a little bit negative. I don't know why I'm sounding negative, but I sort of was. And, um, yeah, let's sound positive here. This is a happy day, right? Uh, now, you probably noticed when I was shooting that scene that my neighbor was working away outside with his snowblower. You could sort of see it in, in one of the uh, little squares there on the surveillance monitor. Now, about 10 minutes after I shot that scene, my phone rings, and he's on the phone saying my snowblower's not working anymore. Yeah, he'd had a problem with it. We're not going to go into into details, but anyway, the bottom line is it wouldn't wouldn't work. So uh, anyway, I'm out there uh, clearing his uh, driveway and whatnot for him. Uh, yeah, I got to get things sorted out a bit here today. It's sort of a bad day for the model ship. Uh, we'll try and do better. There there might be uh, I might go at it again later this afternoon and this evening. I, I probably will actually. I don't know why I wouldn't. Um, but I've got to cut this episode short here. It's, it's what, about 40-something minutes long by now, I guess? Anyway, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. And all being well, <laughs> we'll be seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow.